All right, guys. So here we have the tremolo springs. These are for the headless. We're gonna install these later in the guitar and get them proper setup. So what we always do at the factory when we gonna put the springs in the guitar. So I don't know if, if it's able to see, but they're open from the center. So you know when you have a tram, sometimes the springs can rattle a little bit, give you some spring noise and you don't want that. So what we stand to do in the factory is fill the springs up with a nice piece of foam, preventing them from resonating in your guitar. That could be something that you want to do when you're gonna add an extra spring in your guitar that isn't a foot tone with all these nice damping materials and coatings on them. What we're gonna do is just get the box off the pickup, maybe from your bare knuckles or your Lundgren, doesn't matter that much. We just get this piece of foam and a scissor you want to check how big the cavity is of the in the spring and you just want to cut a nice little piece of foam so and what we want to do so we don't want to push all the stuff in just cramp it in we just want to get actually you want to get like this into the spring so the danger when you just stuffing everything in you're gonna have problems with the spring not getting back to its form after doing some tremble stuff because then the foam is gonna get into the springs and you could have some tuning issues because the because the tension of the spring changes a little bit because of the foam so it doesn't get back in the position that you want it to be i keep it at the length it is i go for the side where the ring is probably with the one and a half millimeter that's with your guitar. You can just gently push it in. Um, so, as you can see, it's pretty much at the end. I'm gonna give it like a little squeeze with a two mil, just to get it in to the end, like this. Then you pull it a little bit so you don't, so you know there's not too much excessive material in there and then with the scissors just nip it off and then you have a resonating free spring for in your trim loaded guitars that does the trick nothing fancy but super effective and it comes with the guitar in your pickup case so you should be good all right guys we're gonna install the springs on the tram if you ever need to get your tram out of the guitar, you want to place it back. This is the way that we do it. This guitar is on final assembly and getting towards the end at this station. So I already have strings on here. So I think getting the strings on the saddles of the handtoog, uh, on the tuners of the handtoog, is something you know how to do because or else you couldn't remove your bridge. So the only thing is different, there are strings on here now, but I'm gonna show what we do to get the springs back in. As I've shown, we have the springs with a little bit of foam in it against the resonating so what we normally do getting a bridge on the guitar is getting this small block you get with the headless trims so we get the block under here you can get the bridge nicely and secure in the post and then you can put a little string tension on probably the two outer strings or all of them that's up to preference but I would say a little string tension on the outer strings then the bridge will come up a little bit but it's gonna be nice and hinged in the studs then you can push the bridge like this against a small little block you got supplied with your bridge and from that point depending on you're gonna do three or four but let's say we're gonna do three. Get the ring in, just pull it nicely, and then you get the spring in. And then from that point, the bridge is going to get pulled against the small little block. So it's nice and secure in its place. And then just repeat it. At the point I got two springs in, I want to get 
some tension on all the springs just a little bit so they're not flopping around and then I like so we have this nice mat but and with these cushions on it but I like to put it on the back and from that point get a bit little bit more of control we also have these nice little hooks so you can pull the spring and then with that it's the same I think it's also an item at steel Mac that like cost I think probably cost like five till ten dollars something like that you can pull it in and I think it really doesn't matter what you're gonna use I think some people will get like a small pliers to do it but you want to prevent that if you miss that the spring is gonna scratch all over your guitar so for me like as a safety precaution I hinge I put it into the ring um, like this and then I always hold one of my fingers at the end of the ring because when it goes when I let it, if it springs off, it will springs off against my finger and it will end up in the cavity and not scratch your body. And then you got your springs in. All right, we're at a headless trim, in this case a Ho7. What's a little bit different between the fixed bridge on a headless versus the trim bridge of a headless is that when you want to adjust the string height, so you want, for example, a little bit of lower action on the guitar you don't have to redo the radius on the saddles because from the factory we're gonna set the saddles to the correct heights in which we think the trim works the best but if you would like a little bit of a lower action then the easiest way to do that is screw down the studs so you don't have to do redo all the saddles and redo the radius you just can lower the studs a little bit also for this just get your measuring tool out so you can check how high it is or how low it is and how low you want to go from that point on i would say check tuning if it's nicely in tune check the relief on the neck if you're happy with the neck relief then you can check the string height i can't say it enough i think but it's from top of the 12th fret to the bottom of the string we always use first string sixth string doesn't matter if it's six seven eight or nine that's how we do it so from that point you can tweak the only thing that makes it a little bit harder to do is that if you don't want to strip the studs from their black chrome or gold painting you want to get some tension of the strings so that you can maybe just slightly push the bridge away a little bit from the studs when you're gonna lower it. Also, if your bridge is nicely set up as you want it to be and you're gonna get the tension of the strings, it's gonna fall in the guitar. We have this nice little tool supplied with your headless strap that has one side is like a wedge, so it's a little bit smaller at the beginning and a bit wider at the ending. So that's, this is the smallest part, thickest part. So most people are going to use the wedge part so you can just get it up a little bit get the wedge under it then see if the bridge is nice and flat how you want it to be so if that's good then you're gonna measure the string height again so what you want it to be and from that so what i'm gonna do i have a gold trim bar because that's what i have just screw it in a little bit so you know it's secure. You doesn't have to turn it down all the way. And then we just can get some tension of the springs, uh, strings. To lower the studs, we use the three millimeter hex key. It fits nice and snug into the studs. When you apply a bit more pressure on this tool, it's nice to have it in the angular way still be careful around with all the hardware you have going on because you don't want to scratch stuff and then if you want to turn it down use small steps it's always good if you don't know precisely where you're heading for just go with quarter or half a step then you see what the difference is and then you know how far you want to go i think a total turn is around the 0.6 millimeters up or down full round so Keep that in mind if you know how low you want to go. Now, because the string tension is still on at the bottom, 
I'm gonna need to apply some tension and I just gently screw it like half a turn and then return the bridge in its place keeping it from being stripped it's a bit hard to see but uh, if you avoid contact it doesn't get stripped all the way around it's a player's guitar if you want to set it up and you don't mind just screw it but this is the way how we do it because you all want new guitars all right you have locked the bridge with the tool we supplied to you for your headless bridge you did the height so now you want to get the guitar back in the correct position i'm just gonna unscrew it a little bit so that we have a correct thing going on i hope so we always use this ph2 screwdriver we have like a long one i think this is 35 centimeters 350 millimeters what this does at the moment you're gonna work on tram guitars is that you can make the right angle on the screw head so it has less chance of you stripping the head of the screw because you have room to give some push and to get it nice aligned with the screw also going to show you the small one this is a, like a normal ph2 and as you can see the handle is right above the guitar doesn't give me that much grip because when i really want to turn them on the guitar especially if you're gonna have like a lacquered finish you don't want to make a nice little scratch in it because you're turning the screwdriver over it so all with all doing setups on a tram guitar just get these just one long ph2 screwdriver and you're gonna be happy the rest of your setup in life so you did your setup so we're gonna tune the guitar back so i think the block is made of polyurethane so it is a little bit flexible but it especially should do the job if you're gonna uh, change strings or want to do like clean your fretboard it would keep the, the bridge at a better place than flat against the body so we shouldn't get it back to the proper position quite easy with most guitars at the point you got all the springs loose and you're gonna screw them back up to the tuning you're gonna definitely do like two maybe three passes to get all the strings in tune again that's because at the point you're gonna remove all the strings the whole neck's gonna move backwards as well because there's no pull on it so you need to readjust that again so At the point you got it retuned, you can get out the block a little bit and then you're gonna hit a string, I would say the E. So now it's a bit too high. That means the bridge should be, the spring tension should be a little less. So we're gonna hit the string, check your tuner and then insert the screwdriver and then just gently and try to get it nice and even hit the string check the tuner and then turn it till it's nice and tuned i try to keep the spring claw nice and even so, so you can see if i move it a little bit around it's gonna differ in tune so try to get it in playing position as best as possible and then you should be good to go so for the headless if you want to change intonation you can put a little block under the bridge keep it in, keep it in its place that could work if you think the block gives a bit too much and you don't get the results that you want to have you can get the back plate of the guitar and what we usually do is the open space at let's say between the tram block and the end of the body is that we gonna put something in here to block the tram when the strings are pulling 
so it could be this block also it's a little bit softer so I really have to jam it in at this point but I think for now it is really good I lay the guitar flat what I want to achieve is that when I work on the trim for the intonation I don't want the trim to move up and down because I want to intonate it in the position that it is now so let's call that the zero position so I wanted to have it in the zero position so I can achieve that to create a pull in that direction that means I can get one or two springs out so the tram will jam against the tool and stays in the zero position while I'm doing intonation having said that the tool has a little bit of density to itself so normally at the shop we're gonna put in something that's really rigid that is hard so it doesn't move we mostly set up the tramps without any springs but especially if you're going to do this at home and you have the tools we supply to you it's better to use this tool and get out let's say one or maybe two springs and it would help a lot to get the setup proper so i use this once again hold your finger at the end and then you can gently pull the string out this is pretty secure now and once again, this block isn't super hard. So I think just really go string by string, retune it and then string, string, string. And from this point, it's just doing the same as we do on the fix. Put it on the neck pickup if you have one. So you have the most harmonics coming through for your tuner to give you the best possible readout and the most detailed one. And from that point, it's just tune harmonics on the 12th fret on all the strings when those are to your preferences turn it on the back insert the spring and from that point if there should be any imbalance in the tuning it's probably going to be over all the range because it maybe has a little bit too much or too less spring tension then you can just move the spring claw back and forth to get it to tune and then you're good to go and you can shred like a beast so we covered today the headless with a tram bridge so we hope we covered everything for a basic setup and for you guys to help you out if you want to redo your setup or fine-tune it a bit to your preferences feel free to leave a comment or give us a contact on the website so you can live long happily ever after <music>